Good evening to the Brookfield Board of Selectmen's meeting of Tuesday, January 28th, 2020. If you would like to rise and join me in saluting the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I would like to have a motion to approve an expense and a payroll warrant. Motion to approve. Second. One twenty-eight twenty. For that's an expense for five hundred twenty-eight thousand eight hundred eighty-three dollars and nine cents. Approve a payroll warrant for one twenty-nine twenty for one hundred sixty-four thousand nine hundred ninety-six dollars and twenty-five cents. Yeah, you had a motion and we passed it. So I'll, I'll want for a second. Aye. 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 Uh, for announcements, we have uh, brush burning permits for the outdoor burning of brush and forestry debris are available until April 30th to uh, obtain permits. Uh, visit caburnpermits.com or call a dispatch at 508-867-10. 66 between the hours of 7:30 and noon on the day you want burn. Uh, Senator Gobi's aide will hold office hours in the Brookfield Town Hall from 2 to 3 p.m. on February 5th. On February 5th. Any other announcements by anybody? Well, have we heard from the town clerk yet? Um, what date they're releasing papers for folks that are? No, uh, right. he has okay. Usually in February. Yeah, I does. know it's usually in February. Usually the information's out by now about when yeah. it's going to get released. Okay, yeah. one, one and, question. And see if maybe we can get a list Peter, of Peter, are you open. running? I just got a list oh, of I, one question list of, I just wanted to ask real quick. Can, oh, he, look, yeah. Okay, can people burn on Sundays too? Yes. Yeah. Oh, they can because I didn't think they could years ago. Years ago. Maybe years ago they couldn't, but now but they But now they, they let them? Yeah, okay. we can drink on Sunday. All right. All right. Yeah, I've, I've asked for a couple of permits on Sunday, All right. actually. All right, we have our first is street lights discussion. Okay. Uh, at our meeting last uh, year, annual town meeting, we voted to, to Rosie appropriate the money of uh, $2,000 to place additional street lights throughout the town with the location and type of these to be determined by the Board of Selectmen, and it was $2,000. Uh, some of the 2000 was used for the Quaybog lights, and there will be more than one half of the money left after Quaybog Street. Uh, we've used them all up. And uh, I guess what they wanted to get was five new street lights. Three. Well, not everyone. This is, no. that's what Mr. Cook well, well, this is what Mr. Saying. Cook was saying. Right. He would like to have three at the Murray Bridge and two on the Mill Street uh, and River Street, and the total cost to run would be 905 per year. And our highway superintendent uh, does not think it is necessary. And Chief Blanchard said he does not see that that would help our traffic problem at all. Well, two got added at Mill yep. Street. There's one at the other end of the bridge now that weren't there. Yep. So we have we covered those. So the last time I talked to Mr. Cook was that he was looking for lights at yep. Rice Corner and. Rice Corner and Gay, and Rice Corner, Rice Corner Cross, Rice Corner and Gay, mm -hmm. and uh, I suggested that he talk to uh, the Highway Superintendent as far as the recommendations. What uh, I the last I see talked anything here about? That's what Cindy came no, down there's for. nothing. This book, Cindy. Well, I, I was just looking. He didn't even say anything about. She heard of that because yeah. I asked her about these two locations about Murray Bridge and well, mostly Mill and, and the 148. And, that's when she told me the recommendations of both of them. Yeah. So does, does anyone know about so, that? So the only, the, the latest location recommendation is at Wagon Wheel because there's, there, as you go down the hill or up coming up the hill, mm -hmm. just at, as you enter the Wagon Wheel area, there's a little side cutoff into Wagon Wheel yeah. and it's dark. Yeah. And so if, if uh, Brian or Cindy had a preference that would be a place for an additional street light. So if, if we wanted to make a decision tonight, I would say to go forward with that light as recommended by the highway superintendent. I'll make a motion for that. A second. All in favor? Aye. 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 
one light? Yeah, just one light and for one now. Light. And then now. We'll see where we are with the bill and if we've got some more money, fine. We'll do some more. All right. Second thing on our agenda is shared services discussion. Uh, Laurie had, uh, this came, Karen had sent it and then I guess it had gone to you, Clarence. And Laurie, Laurie had said that she, she says there were no shared services currently in any area towns for major positions, but suggested sharing some of the smaller portions such as animal control officer and different inspectors might be a good idea. Yeah, so, so I don't what, know if you this want to take a, the rest of this over. Uh, okay, well, two choices. So w what this was was CMRPC looking to do a survey mm -hmm. as to shared services. Yeah. And what, what I would do is if, and based on Lori's recommendation, mm -hmm. I would fill out the survey to that effect okay. as to the s several sh shared services mm -hmm. that we might be interested to talk to other towns as far as sharing. So I, I will do the survey if that's what you like. Okay. All right, so, All I, right. so that's it on it. So if you, yeah. Do you let want me to look borrow, at any of this? No, yeah, let me borrow the, sure, you can let me, I'll bring this back tomorrow. Yeah, sure, no problem. Oh, I don't need that. I can reprint it. You can have that. Okay. Because okay. I'll just do the survey okay. based you. on Lori's recommendations. Okay. Third thing is budget priorities for state earmarks. Yep. Oh, right. We need Peter back. I don't know. All right. Mm. Okay. Uh, Kat, Kathy LaRock, you had sent this to Kathy. Yep. Yeah. And uh, we meant... And I guess you recommended that items to be added to the Board of Selectmen's agenda for a discussion this evening. And uh, so, some of the ideas here. Come up here, Peter. This is your your topic. <laughs> okay. Those are some of the ones that we submitted. Some. Those are okay. The ones we yep. the feedback back on. Some of the different things would be computers for. Uh, Town Hall, Fire, Highway, and the Library. That's what yeah. Kathy says. Yep. Yeah. Uh, For that compliance with the yeah. being capable yes. of handling Windows 10. Mm -hmm. Yep. And then uh, air compressor for Peter, and that would be $62,270. A and then a generator. Um, there's two, if I may interject. No, um, it says air compressor here. Air compressor, <laughs> we were told by our vendor that the air compressor that we use to fill the breathing air tanks. Oh. The manufacturer is no longer in business. There's service, you know, service dependency issues. We're actually going to pursue that. The announcement came out today that the federal grant where we got the air packs opens in first week of February. So I'm actually going to play off the fact that while you bought a C's, this is the next progressive yeah. thing. We'll hope for the best. So I can yeah. forego on that. Um, our vendor is pretty good on you know, duct tape and bailing twine in terms of keeping things together. Okay. So it's not an emergent thing and it's not as old as some of them I've seen. So the compressor, I wouldn't, if, if, they, if we have a one shot with, with the Senator's office, I wouldn't do it on that. I'll, I'm gonna look at the uh, federal funding aspect of it. Now, what about the generator? Did you, did you get a new generator? Cause there's been different people who had concerns. They said that the generator you have now, it's been outside and in the rain. The, it's outside because the as part of the electrical program we're doing at the station, it involves the, we've got great support from the Tantasco Electrical mm -hmm. Division, which their field instructor is our wiring inspector, yeah, Scott, Scott Mansfield. Yeah. So it just works out really well. He's working with our contractor and, and the kids are doing a lot of work um, for free. In part of that, he happened to see for the first time, he got a good look at the generator that we had. Now the generator we had, we got surplus from the phone company, which I think was Verizon at the time, no, AT&T at the time, about 24 years ago. And he looked at it and realized that it was a vintage from the 1960s, and it, his thought was it never should have been put in the building. Um, it, was this, it was built for the phone company in that time frame when anybody operating it would have known exactly, everything's variable. You look at a generator now, there are no switches. It turns on, it turns yeah. off. This one you can actually adjust. If somebody were to bump into it, uh, and it's above my my scale on it, uh, 
you can adjust the voltage, you can adjust the frequency of the electrical output. And his thought right then is, you shouldn't use it. You should. It never should have come in here. Um, we made it, not knowing that over the years, we, we made it work. We've only had a couple issues with it over the years. And the timing of it was kind of impeccable because I had electrical people there. And in fact, I also had the heating contractor there that was fueled by that. And Scott said, there's no way to make that better. There's no way to make it safe or make it applicable for here. Get it out of here as soon as you can. And he said, definitely don't use it. Well, we're in the midst of doing all this. So I've got electrical people that can disconnect it. I asked the guy from McDonald Heat, do you have five minutes to disconnect the fuel lines? He said, yeah, sure. So we did that. Um, Ms. Pomper from Highway was nice enough to come up, mm -hmm. pull it out, and in fact, I understand the email from Karen. Um, there was talk about you know you putting it out for bid, and Scott, oh, Mr. Yeah, Mansfield, even that. said you shouldn't even sell it. You shouldn't yes, take the liability. Right. Somebody said, well, it's a really nice diesel motor. If somebody wants to take the generator off. Scott's point was, it's not safe. It's really not safe for anybody just because they got the high bid. You know, if you could target it and say only to a qualified whatever, but he's, his part, thought is just scrap it. Okay, so, so we just bring it down to the landfill? Um, yeah. The thought oh, on the landfill is it, it, hmm? it would go... Wouldn't it be metal recycling? It would go to, yeah, it would end up there. Um, at the transfer station, it would just go in one of those very large dumpsters. Okay. And that could actually cause a problem with, uh, I field. think, Mr. Dupree, uh, Dupree from North Brookfield hauls it out. What, wouldn't I mean, we want to just take it direct, see if the highway so, department well, can take it, it direct so, to one of the... If somebody from high, uh, highway department over the years has used the facility in Charlton, where actually Dupuy takes their material. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, bypassing that, there you're going to put it in a 30-yard dumpster that a truck has to waste up, and it's really not practical, okay. too. So if we're going to move it to eliminate any future issues with us or a vendor, yeah, we'd be better off if, if you know, when Ms. Pompriano can work it in, if he's doing a scrap run with old signs and old posts and everybody could okay. work it in with that or a special trip where he just puts it in the truck, takes it yeah. and so, off okay, it from so, there. So we'll Do we want to take an action to yeah. just scrap it? Just scrap. Do we recommend to you to scrap it through Brian? I, Brian? I would defer on, well, on I, Mr. I think we, I, think we need to, I think we need to vote it as excess and then yeah, authorize. Okay. So I'll make a motion that we, we vote that the generator be deemed excess um, surplus. surplus property. Yeah. Um, and that it be disposed of not through municipid, but to avoid any potential liability risk that it be uh, brought directly to a scrapyard when when there's resources okay. available. I'll, I'll reach out to Ryan in okay. the next couple of days. So. And you got a second? Yeah. All right. All in favor? Aye. 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 So that being said, it left us without a without full office. service generator. Yeah. We have a generator, a power failure generator, that we funded about 21 years ago that is now natural gas that just runs certain key functions. You know, some lights come on, um, there's the garage door, just basic things so that two in the morning we lose power and don't know it. But if something were to happen large scale, and this, luckily this isn't the winter we seem to be worrying about that, but that's yeah, something to change, you know, on a, on a 12. Like, yeah, when you, when you look at your Facebook feed for memories, that's what's coming up now is what happened five years ago, 12 years ago. Um, now, what about all your radio systems and everything? What takes care of that? Is there that's a on that generator. That, on that generator, it's, it's small enough that it can't do everything, but we, it worked it out large enough that, you know, if nothing else, if something happens and the power fails, if the power fails in the center of town, maybe only a couple of our people know it, but the radios would be up, so we'd still be alerted to okay, the fact so that something happened. We could get okay. up here, and there may be a slight delay because we, the facility isn't fully functioning. Mm -hmm. And then it goes for the larger part of it. Some accidental offense on the whole thing. When we were doing the electrical project, getting it set up, working with Mr. Mansfield, him wearing both hats, he looked at what we were doing and he, he realized, well, someday you're going to get a bigger, not a bigger, but a better generator, not taking a good look. And he said, yes, that's our, our goal, our hope. He said, well, there's one piece of equipment we, we're not putting on the bill of materials for this project, and that's a transfer switch that automatically recognizes how power coming in, generator comes on, dumps in. He said, if we're doing all this work, why don't you buy the transfer switch now? It's easier to install now while we've got everything taken apart. So we did that, not knowing you know, that Scott was such a soothsayer on the whole thing that it would be this soon. 
So the project right off the bat is easier to encompass because again, we had no idea. We were thinking, okay, in a couple of years we'll really look at it. We get a couple of needs checked off the list. But so that's why the project, um, the estimate that himself and a contractor came up with is about fifty-three thousand. That's subject, but just wanting to get a number out there as soon as I can. That's just a way I like doing it. You know, research shouldn't take all, as much as. Do we know what the uh, highway generator wound up actually costing them? Um, if I may through the chair. I asked Lori that same question. Um, the project started at 39. They have $7,000 left. So th uh, that was 32. The quote, the invoice for that generator was about 32. So it looks like everything they, all the site work, uh, this, the location did change from the original plan to where it is now, but all the materials, all the site work, all the electrician and plumber costs seem to have been absorbed by highway. It doesn't look like they, pe they no, that they set the project up to be a soup to nuts operation. They bought the generator. And then through their Let's expense go. account, they did all that. Uh, okay. So it, it's from a from a generator standpoint, we have a number, but from a complete, you know, project project well, yeah. thing, we don't. Got it. So and uh, there. So it's the fifty. There's this three phase, and before anybody asks, um, I know I would. The fire station is two phase. The town hall is three phase on the last upgrade because of the hope for an elevator. So as much as I would like to get a generator, you know, go that next step on generator and be able to energize the whole four and six central street compound, we can't. Right, because, so, because all of yours is... Right, we're all two-phase and the police station is already in. It's small enough to run their facility, nothing else. Yep. Because that's come... The old generator we had many, many years ago ran both complexes. Everything at 4 Central Street, everything at 6 Central Street, but that was before the town hall was ramped up to uh, three phase, my understanding. So, do we need to work? You, you have a $53,000 kind of all in number. Yes. That it, if we were to suggest to the gov uh, the senator that we need an emergency generator because of what we've just learned, yeah. that the 53 would be a good number to. I think it would be a good number. I can look at what we're going to have left from our project because the other thought too is I don't well just from history we know how long it takes the state budget or the state to do anything oh, yeah. a budget never It'll mind be after July. supplemental if we were still to at least pursue it as a as a as a holding place for an annual town meeting that number could be worked on from 53 I'll see what's left at the end of this project see if Mr. Pompreon's done with his funding, then we could transfer some of that around or in the municipal transfer. Yeah. You know, we learned more today from Lori on that. So, and even looking at some other options for moving some around, creating an account for that, or even, well, it's not fleet, but you know, there's no capital, there's no CIPC funding beyond fleet at this point, so without stabilization, so that becomes No, but, but we do fund a municipal property and typically it's assigned to the town hall, but we do have a line item in the budget for um, for municipal property maintenance. Yeah. Um, so well, that's not, you have that account, but so you mean, you mean fund it to buy that? I mean, no, no, just no, in it, terms it, of as the transfer. year winds down, if we have places where we have money that isn't going anywhere. Oh, right. Remember okay. at the meeting earlier, Lori said, well, we're not going to do a special because they don't yes, let us yes, manage our own right, money. Yeah. Um, if we had a place to do it through an intermunicipal transfer, something that, especially yeah. if Lori was okay with, yeah, you can do that, right. and then we'll know where it's coming out of in fiscal 21. Right. So, you know, if that's the case, then some of that 53 would come down, and lo and behold, Senator Gobi comes through, well, that account is so much the better. You right. Know, you guys can do windows, and <laughs> somebody right. can do so, windows. So that, that, is, that would be something to consider is to, to is that... And I think I think that's where breaking out your project plan, where it might be worthwhile to say, okay, the site work, and this is where, from a funding perspective, the generator versus the site work, the piping, the wiring, it might be worth it to actually split those into two separate things. The generator money as a capital mm -hmm. article, necessarily, that site work being something that gets fund to the to the property mm -hmm. improvement mm -hmm. account, um, in essence, earmarked for the work associated with the generator. 
um, and then that way if you come in under budget or something else comes in under budget that it puts us in a situation where we have some flexibility within the year in order to address other needs at the same time so so where I'm headed with this thing my thoughts mm -hmm. are that the idea of an earmark that might be possible that we put forward the gen well we've got a couple of talk yeah. discussions other things to discuss as well but I'd, I'd put this thing through through at the 53 right absolutely to cover put, everything to yep. cover everything and, yep. and just say oh by the way we just found this out have Peter write a nice little note as he did the last time for yep. the, the $12,000 yep. and if we go down this path Peter that we'd go down and we'd ask for this 53 failing that at the town meeting we would be prepared to take an action to move forward with the new if the earmark didn't come through. Yep. So th and, this, yep. is, uh, this has got to be somewhat of a priority of the ask. And, and setting myself back from the project, I looked at some of the other proposals going in, and we said, well, and this didn't come from me, well, maybe they'd fund half the fire truck. The state does not want to go on record that they're willing to set aside money for 351 fire trucks. Even the computer project, yeah. great idea since we didn't get that grant. But do they want to go on record? Oh, put money in, we'll buy you all the computers. Because yeah. there's 350 other communities, I guarantee, sure. that could use more computers than we do. Well, so there's some things that they like the small projects. You look at some of the stuff over the years. They gave a bunch of money to East Brookfield for their anniversary. They rebuilt the fountain on West Brookfield Common. Yep. You know, things like that. Mm -hmm. Something that... that that senator can go and that not every and that, yes. but that not everybody yeah. is going to ask for right. It's so. it, yeah. It's the the last set of your marks that went through. The largest one was in the fifties, yep. as far as fifty thousand yep. dollars. So this would be a perfect one yes. to it, it, kind of throw out the, the, this as a larger one, mm -hmm. and then and, 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 and have we'll, a backup plan and have a have a couple of other backups. And I've got a couple and, of and just like I'm going to tell FEMA. Well, you bought me air packs. Yeah. Now, to be able to phone. now we can say, and you bought me an electrical panel, but I don't have any power to put to it. <laughs> so. so so I think this this the generator is kind of like high on the list. Yeah. Now I you have it. Do you I, have a couple more? Or? Oh, this is from Peter O'Connell. He's at Senior Center. Yeah, and again, that's going to be big bucks. Yeah. If, and then he said the Felton Heller House, yeah. new fire engine, and Tobin Campground. That's what yeah. Peter has. Right, and when and we're already looking for monies yeah. in other places for Tobin. Okay, and then the highway department has a survey and design of Gay Road, which would cost about 30000 Right, so we, and, and again, Cindy's got a nice note here yeah. as far as uh, the 30000 okay. for engineering, because Ryan's going to fix up at uh, Rice Corner to get that drainage moving in the right direction, but then the next stop is down the hill uh, onto Gay or through Gay and, and out. And so that's where the $30,000 comes from. So, again, it, it, it's something we need to do. What we have, and Sharon has someone coming to the planning board meeting here in a week um, that's talking about a development on Gay Road or Gay, uh, Gay Road Sturbridge Line. And uh, so if, if that were to move forward, it, if it were to move forward, we'd definitely need to be doing yeah. something with the roads. Of course. And I, Again, until we kind of understand that, I, I think that that's a second priority, um, at least in my opinion, to the generator. And then I had one other. Um, ADA ramp at South Pond. Uh, yeah. Yeah, David it. Ayers had pressed as hard as he could to see what we could do to get some money to have an ADA compliant ramp. If we don't do anything, the ramp's gonna wash away anyway. So what I was proposing is we throw two at the, go uh, the senator, the generator for sure being the highest priority because of what we now know. And then the second would be, and I'll call it a regional project, and Ryan estimates that that ramp would cost, if we did the work, would cost about $25,000. So uh, I'd throw that as a regional project and see if she was interested to fund a regional project. Regional. Or as a regional project. So that those would be my, it would be my recommendation. We have Kathy work with Peter yeah, I agree with that to also. gen up a letter to talk about those two projects and get get it in front of the senator. One yep. motion to that effect. So, so you're saying just the ramp and the generator. Or you're saying the ramp, the generator, and the survey, the engineering survey. I three in front of them. Hmm. Maybe yeah. What we do is yeah. Let's well, put all three. Honestly, I think that the gay road is almost regional too. If one of the things it's supporting is going to be good point that that um, development yeah. potentially yeah. right yeah. So 
That would. Um, I don't know if it's close enough. I don't know if that site is close enough to the town line to be considered regional, but that whole gay road well, corridor. Well, it's half the guy's huge. property is in Sturbridge. Well, there the you go. the entrance is going to be Gay Road if it's going to be right. anywhere, but the the property. Well, I mean, the homes being broken. Right. So I don't think it. I don't. Be think half it, and half. Don't I don't think know. it. Hurts but it, it, who knows until yeah. we, we get this guy in. Here. I don't think it it hurts to ask for three discrete. Mo relatively modest projects and see what the answer comes back. Yeah. Okay. Right. So probably maybe. So those are the, those are three. I'll work with Kathy and Peter. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. Work with him. Of the three, you could work with, uh, work together, and then maybe have it ready for the next time her aide gets in here. Yes. In February. That okay. was the idea. Yeah. Um, did. So CIPC and I missed I missed the meeting this this last month. Um, did they have a specific recommendation about something else to earmark? And it, was, well, yeah. it was those larger dollar bills. Oh. The, the big bucks. Yeah, and, they, and they again, wanted, like I said, the senior center, Felton Heller House, new fire engine, and the Tobin campground. That's what they had. Okay. Right. Do we want to put one of those as number four and just just put I, a big dollar? Or you're saying that the last time the biggest last thing one, was the last grand. one was fifty grand. I, mean, I don't. Who, I, yeah. I don't think I would. I think I'd yeah, put so those go three for the on. things that are go for the things that yeah. are more likely to get approved. We, yeah, we got something that's an emergency yeah. related yeah. thing. Mm -hmm. Something that might be a couple of regional things that would improve things. Yeah. 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 I think I mean, that's. I think that's a good message yeah. to send. That's right? what I would do. Just those three. All right. Okay. Good. Then that's what we'll do. Okay. Okay. So, Jan, I'm going to ask you a question. But to Peter. What, could you put a new generator in right now? In the firehouse now is what you're doing now. If we were able to secure funding one way or another, there would be a new generator. Um, it would be similar in design to the one that the highway department put in, so it's more designed to stay outside. And that would work out well because it would be natural gas fed from the line behind the building. But I mean, so what do you mean doing over there? You got a new generator now, or you just took the old one out? Just put one no, in. we took the old one out because it was deemed and unsafe. You put one in yet. We have not put one in yet. So. Oh, I see. Okay. Yeah. Everybody says in town that you put a $53,000 generator in. No. I see where that come from. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I, yeah. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. So, all right, so okay. we're going to go see if we can fish for some. Okay, do we need to make a vote on that? For okay, three? so what? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so what we'll do is um, a motion to move forward with the suggestion for earmarks of uh, an emergency generator uh, improvements, uh, engineering uh, for the improvements to gay, I'll say Rice Corner slash Gay Road and an ADA compliant ramp for South Palm okay. Beach. Especially I'll second that. Okay. Especially if you get Don Taft and QQOA to, to support. To do something on the ramp thing too. Oh yeah. Yeah, from a sportsman's issue, you know. Yep. If, well, if the, Dickie Wood was still alive, we'd have the perfect spokesman for it. Yeah, well, and, Unfortunately, we lost um, David Ayers to the beach committee for the simple reason he just got so frustrated with wildlife. This will be a way to get around and do what he wanted to do. So, yeah. good. Okay, Got it. Good. Okay. Thank you, Peter, for all your input. Nope. No, that's it. Oh, yeah, we need we to need vote. We need to vote that one. Oh, yeah. Um, all in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Okay, thank you. Next thing on our agenda is snow and ice deficit deficit for from the highway we got something from Cindy this morning and she's requesting to deficit spend uh, snow and ice by thirty thousand dollars motion to uh, and I, had, I mentioned that to Laurie and she said that would be fine uh, uh, I'll second I, I do want to say is that um, I'm okay with us approving this tonight but I would ask that we get the details of the expenditures thus far Anytime we have a request like this, um, and I know they track it very carefully down at the highway, so mm -hmm. I, I trust that they've done the math in terms of that the thirty thousand will take them the rest of the way that they need to get to. Yeah. Um, but I would, I, I know for a fact, in order to get that through uh, the advisory committee, they're going to need to submit the mm -hmm. uh, their record of the yeah. expenditures thus far. So, um, so I mean, I'll write an email to Cindy. Yeah. To I, I did actually already ask for it. Oh, okay. Once oh, I saw okay. it this evening. All right. Um, but uh, usually she does. She, she usually, she usually does. attaches she it. She didn't, and then she was gone. So yeah. She so she was probably in a hurry. Yeah. So, um, but but when that request goes to the advisory, mm -hmm. they really need to attach the the where they're at so far. 
Laurie said one thing. She thinks that they should be putting in more money for snow and ice deficits so that we don't, I mean, with snow and ice so that we don't have these deficits every year. Well, good for discussion. Hmm. Yeah. That's what she thinks, because I talked to her about that today. That's her suggestion. So we have a vote on that? Yep. All in favor? Aye. 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 Yeah. I, I think that's worth a discussion. Um, I think the challenge with that is that um, once you budget money into snow and ice, you can't reduce the budget. Like, by state law, once you fund it to a certain level, you can't reduce it. So it has to go through. Yeah, we had this debate a year ago. Yeah, and, and, or two. And, and we opted not yeah. to do that. Yeah, and, and that's okay. why we. Uh, yeah. So. And, and this number is lower than last year. Oh, yeah, like I think, so, I think so last I think year we were overspent like last sixty year, grand. Like the last couple yeah. years, it was like fifty, sixty grand. Yeah. This right. year, we this year that 30. thirty grand may actually get us through the end of the yeah. year. So how much do you increase it, right? So yeah. we might be at a point where we should increase it maybe twenty or twenty five, but even that would be a push because if if some of the work that Ryan is doing right now, a good example is we spent like $16,000 to, to put the meters on the trucks, yep. right? Mm -hmm. For controlling the yep. salt, right? Next year, we're not gonna have that expense and we're gonna be using less salt. Mm -hmm. So we may wanna be careful, I guess, is what okay. I'm saying, of, in, of increasing the funding to snow and ice. Um, Worth the discussion. Yeah. Okay. All right, moving on. Anyway, moving on. Annual town meeting. The new, yeah, it's a set tag for the town meeting. We, at our meeting today with the advisory board and all the department heads, it was a very good meeting. A lot of input we got from different people. And so when it came time to talk about a day for annual town meeting, uh, we were talking and we said how last year, I guess, Dave, didn't you put a box out last year? Anyway. Didn't you put a box at town meeting to see what nights people wanted and, and Friday was still a good night? Well, what was suggested today that we do the budget on Thursday evening and then we'll go right into the next night with everything else. And then if we need another night, we'll just have to do it. So get things done in two nights. If we manage ourselves. Yeah. If so we that people aren't up yeah. at midnight. Yeah, that's what we oh, oh, that's what we already said. Like with Thursday would probably just do the budget. Just get through the budget. Would you do that or do, we we have for two years now we've done non budget and then moved into well, budget. What wait, maybe think? we can talk more about that later. But okay, but two two nights, all right. Two nights. Yep. And so we Linda, let me give you this calendar. So, so we have it. Okay, because we, yeah. we talked about, okay, for June, we talked about maybe the uh, second week of June, mm -hmm. and that would be the 11th and the 12th. Yep. Does that sound all right? And then Don's not here tonight, but we'd have to double check with him. Yeah, that's what I was going to say, is we need to check with the moderator. Yeah. So let's use that for the straw man for tonight. Yeah, for the 11th and the 12th. Yep. To yeah, set the so. town meeting. And then, like, they really don't do town meetings, I mean, at once. They don't do specials anymore, so we would just take and put anything for FY20 right at the beginning of the annual, like we did last year. Okay. Deadlines. Yeah, now, yeah, that's what I was going to go into next. And now uh, we thought we'd like probably uh, open the warrant tonight for the annual, and if anybody has anything from you know FY20 to go on it, and then we would close it by March 31st. How does that sound? Sounds good to me. March 31st, we would close the warrant. So, motion to open the warrant for the annual town meeting for June 11th slash 12th. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. All right. And then uh, another thing we were talking about, maybe we, should, we shouldn't maybe be uh, open at water times, you know, how we'll reopen it and then we close it again. Maybe this year we shouldn't. We should just keep it the way it is once the articles are submitted. That's something we talked about even with the advisory board today. Because a lot of times you do that, then you're, you're leaving yourself open for more things to come on. Well, the one thing that we can't do, though, is we can't preclude 
anything that gets put to citizens' petition? Does the state law say Oh, well, citizens, but they, they will all, we'll have to know. We put out right. a word saying that everything had to be in by the 31st. Yes. Yeah. So, so mm -hmm. I think in terms of, of submi submissions internal to the department heads, all of that. But we I could even make it aware. It Make it aware to people if they want to put in a citizen's petition, they have to be in by March 31st. Yeah, if we have to dip and dodge yeah. around that, we can. We but, can. Yeah. We should. But but at least put a stake in the ground. Yeah. Yeah. The 31st. I'm just, I just don't want to set us up for a situation where somebody claims we're trying to do something outside of. No, no. we're not. And no, just I, I think these are straw men anyway. I mean, yeah. we're, we're already starting right. with Don worrying about Don's scheduling. He's not here yeah. tonight. Right. And then another thing we we all discussed today was sending out the warrant this year. Via the mail. Yep, through the mail. The yep. reason we had stopped years ago was because a lot of them went into the basket. But if we can, you know, try to get them out to the town so the people will know what is on these, it will probably make it much easier for uh, when they come to town meeting. And I guess the town clerk said if the... Um, there wasn't enough money in the budget with the advisor, but he said he would take money out of his budget and send it. Because we could, last time we did it, times we did it, we always had a bulk rate. They would, we had a bulk yeah. rate to yeah. do it. Yeah, we did it back about three or four years yeah. ago. So he said time. he is willing to do that, Good. to get that out. And it, they try to like to get it out by May 1st, and then it'll give people a while, you know, to look at it. Yeah. And if we do have it available, um, we could even have some of them out if people don't get them for the uh, for the annual town election, which is the first Monday in in May. Right. So we could we'll have those books all set up and we'll have them ready. Yeah. One thing that I think has worked well in the past is if you put a collection point up at the post office as well. The oh, people yeah. that don't want it a lot of times will turn it back in. And what we could do is do a first run printing that's just for what's getting mailed and the, like a little bit of overage to have yeah. here for pickup if yeah. people are interested, and then use. See how much we get recollected yeah, at and the And then tell them office. like we have before, we've always put a little do. thing on the bottom, mm -hmm. you know, bring this with you to town meeting. Yeah. So you'll have it. Great. So I think that kind of, yeah. For tonight anyway. Yep. So that sounds good to everybody? Yep. Yep. So so we voted to 11th and 12th, 12th pending, so. pending confirmation no, no. Of, of moderator availability. Yeah. And then maybe if we do have to do a run over, to another night if we don't finish everything up. We could maybe do it the following Friday. Right. That would be Carol, reserved. Oh, the or the following Thursday. Or so. the following Thursday. But we don't we talk to we don't we don't want to go late into Thursday because people have to work that night. That's why we said we could just do the budget that night. Yeah. Yep. Two two hours and then Yeah. A couple hours and that would be it. And we table. could probably start it maybe even at six thirty. Right. Yeah. And if we, we had to go to special. nine. Yeah. Yeah. 639 it'll give us two and a half hours yeah i think that would be good yep. what is the what's the friday after 19th the 19th it's the 19th plan so the 19th and if we had to yeah. put someone i, the I also have a recommendation and maybe we should check with steve on this is that um two weeks prior to that like the end of May, if if the budget is done in a timely manner, the mm -hmm. way that they're currently scheduling yep. it to do, find oh, yeah. out if they want to do a public hearing. Um, one of the Thursday nights that's normally one of their that meetings. Is, that's something around I, the budget. Yeah, I have suggest I had suggested that many years ago to select because a lot of the communities do that. Mm -hmm. They do have a public hearing and they have people. If they any questions on any of the articles, they can answer them. Then it'll make town meeting run more smoothly because yep. they don't have all these questions. They can, yeah, they can ask the questions, and mm -hmm. if they don't get answered that night, they can have the yep. materials prepped for the beginning yeah. of town I've meeting. Been, so I they have can mentioned hand it that out there. for many years to try. It. Nobody was ever in agreement with it, but I think it's a good idea to do that. No, do you want me to send it. him an email suggestion? Yeah, just yeah. just ask them if they'd be yeah. willing to host a public hearing yeah. sometime prior to the town yeah. meeting around the budget. And and then another thing I think what we're going to do um, uh, Mike and um, Don and uh, Don Fagano went to see a demonstration done at another town on these electrical voting machines that they can use a town meeting mm -hmm. so he has a company that is willing to come in and do one for free okay so that's another thing we thought if the approval was to select when that we would uh, do that 
So I'll make a motion to support if we can get a free trial. Oh yeah, and it's a free trial. It will come in and do a free trial. No, and I think it's a good idea. And that that's another thing that I guess the uh, makes the meeting run much smoother now. And then he talked about, didn't he say something about that? Or maybe he told me about buying it regionally with some other towns. Yeah, if, if it were regional, then it, it was, makes some sense. Yeah, but if it's one town, yeah. forget it. Regional, I mean. and then you know everybody has their meetings differently, and so we can swap it back from town to town. We'll see on our PC, I think he said they were, they might be a grant. Yeah. Right. Okay. Right. But it's. Sure. I was, at, I was at that meeting, and uh, they were talking about Guam and a couple other towns are on board with it, as long as we all get different meetings. Yeah. Different dates for our meetings, yes. Right. It's really a good, good thing. So Warren's on board with the yeah. thing? Yeah. That's, good. That's where the meeting was. Oh, is that where it was? Yeah. Because Mike had asked me to go, and I had something yeah, else going. Yeah, it was Yeah. Oh, you went over? Yeah. Yeah, it was very good. Good. Okay. All right. So that's all said here. So our next thing is make a motion to sign the presidential primary election, which is the third day of March. Motion to sign. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. They can put the date in when they want to sign it. Get up to it. It's got about four or five. The next on our is agenda is special use permits. These are for the lakes again. And we, we can vote all, all at one yeah, time. Yeah, just read away. Okay. Hmm? I said read away. Read, okay. Uh, 328 2020 on Quaybog Pond is the Mass Bass Alliance. Uh, 29 2020. The Quaybog on Quaybog is the East Brookfield Recreation Department. Next one is 53 2020 on South Pond in Brookfield, and that's on North, that's from the Northeast Bass Anglers. And 725-2020 on Quaybog Pond for the Mass Bass Alliance. I have a motion to uh, motion to sign. sign. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. This one on the appointment in there that I added at the last minute that we didn't know about, so I just want to you know. Oh. That's for the assistant animal control officer. Oh, okay. And that one's pending a um, successful quality check. Okay. All right, we have some appointments, and I'll name them all off, and we can vote on them at once. Okay, we have uh, one for an assistant animal control officer, and his name is Travis Stewart, and it will turn with to expire June 30th, 2020. And the next one is for Carol Plum to go on to the Board of Registers, and that would expire June 30th, 2020. Next one is Recreation Committee for Timothy Nye, and it would expire June 30, 2020. 
and Michael Lawrence for Recreation Committee, and that would be June 30th, 2020. We'll have a motion to uh, approve those. Mo motion to approve and with, the, with the with the Travis Stewart being conditional. Yeah. Conditional, on the, yeah. conditional okay. uh, pending the background check. All in check. favor? Oh, one minute. Now, with the, for the other Second. two that um, going on Recreation Committee, have they had I a query check? I'm not sure if they give them they probably should if they're yes, working okay. around children. Okay. You should probably mention that to I will. I will. Let Jeff know. To, will. to Jeff Landine. Okay. Uh, so I don't know that we've done that historically. We may need to come out with some sort of a policy letter around that. I'm surprised we haven't, but I think that's important. Jeff and find out yeah. yeah, see what, what his practice is. Yeah. yeah, but I think that is important. If, we, if they're going to be working with children, they should have a card check. Yep. I know I do. Yep. <laughs> Who do we currently have certified to run the quarries? Jeff. I'm going to get certified. That's what I was talking to Molly about it today. Good. In the meantime, I think Peter is certified. Oh, he is? Oh, Peter. Because Peter, Peter Martell took it upon himself to get certified when that whole thing went down. Do yeah, um, so, so if you could just check with him and see Sorry. if he'd be willing to do it for those. Thank you. And then we even talked about even having the police department do them too. If nobody up here wanted to get certified before Karen had agreed to do it. Yeah, appreciate you being willing to do that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, the next one is uh, for a class two provisional license for a used car dealer license for uh, class two for, uh, what, what is his name, Richard Ross. And it's DBA, BNR Coachworks. And what he wants to do is he wants to close the business, so to sell uh, secondhand motor vehicles. So this license would expire on 831 20. Right. Motion, to Motion for that. Second. All in favor? Explain, uh, what did he explain to you? I, I read the email oh. with all the information yeah. about it. So um, fundamentally, he hasn't really been compliant with a lot of things yeah. but in order to uh, make it possible for him to stand it down appropriately we're doing this so correct so we seconded so we just need to vote it vote it all in favor aye, aye. aye. Yet on the claim box is from he's he wants to open next yes, month. Yes, he has a um, he actually has a hearing, an alcohol license hearing on the 11th. Okay, because I know February, he's yeah. getting ready. All right, we have right here now we have moving on, we have to sign CMRPC grant invoices. Okay, and we have uh, six of them here to sign, and they're all FY26. FY17 grants. Do you want me to <coughs> tell you the cost of all of these? I'll just read them off. Yeah, okay. just read them off. All right. It's the a ADA plan for Hayden High Design, 15 post road testing, and the Senior Center Design Housing Rehab. And that was $8,043.06. And then the, the next one is for FY 2018 grant number 12, CMRPC Hayden Hyde and Housing Rehab. $9,319.05. And then Leonard Engineering for Engineering Hayden and Hyde. And this was the FY 2018 grant for $3,374.38. And then it's a FY 2017 CBG grant for BETA 15 post road testing for $2,945. And then we have 2017 CDBG grant for the BETA 15 post road is the $1,615. And then uh, another one for 2017 CBG grant for BETA 15 post road for $4,940. $4, and 
I would like a motion for the board of selectmen to sign these. Motion to sign. Second. And this is really the closeout inventory invoices. Two stickies here. Oh, is it two stickies? Yep. Okay. Do you have two or just the one? Just the one. Just the one. Oh, no, just the one. This one's got two. Okay, now next one on our agenda is to sign the CMRPC contract amendment number one. All right, this is uh, with the town with Central Mass Regional Planning for FY28 Massachusetts Community Development Fund Administration Services. And uh, attached to the signatures in our agreement, effective on the 26th of November 2018, is hereby amended to reflect the following change. Article 6, time of performance is 6.1 is extended to June 30th, 2020, with the exception of closeout activities. And if this, and Justice, uh, do we agree on this? And just we need agree to have uh, just the chairman sign these. Yep, and, uh, and motion to sign. Motion to sign. And, and do you have anything to yeah, say I, about these? Yeah, okay. go second. And what, what this does is, is there's about seven thousand dollars, if, if my memory is correct, from that meeting, where uh, we can help with a house. There may be one housing rehab um, project that we can take care of in the meantime. Yeah. So okay, we, so we opted with a, an extension yeah. so that we can. Because the extension will allow us to get one more project what, in. What it sounded like was one more. Yeah, because there's a bunch of others that w just wouldn't meet the criteria. And, the, and that extension is still into June. Yeah. I think that also allows for the invoices for the other six projects to come in. Because mm -hmm. I know they said that it was going to be really tight to try and get even the six that were already approved, get all the, the invoicing back from the contractors. So, we're going to bring this up tonight, too. Oh, because, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I guess we had talked about a solar committee, but instead of doing that, Laurie has recommended that uh, Maureen uh, Morano yep. do Schedule Z as a municipal clerk until Laurie has time to do it next year because Maureen is an accountant and she said she's willing to do it. Oh, yeah, that'd be great. Yeah. Super. Okay. 
the next one is. Ooh, do we have correspondence? Yeah, correspondence. No correspondence? Oh, yeah, we do have bunch. correspondence. Okay. okay. We have here something here from, uh, it came from the, the governor and the lieutenant governor say, saying that our fire department, congratulations, uh, we have been awarded $3,055 for student awareness of fire education and $2,055 for senior safe grants. And that's to Brookfield, so we'll congratulate Peter on going for these grants. I don't know if Kathy helped him with those at all. Not, not those, I don't okay. think. All right, and now, this is from the Historical Commission. It says, during the Historical Commission meeting on January 9, 2020, Thomas Moore asked for a motion from the commission stating that the slab from the building at the campground not be removed. Donald Fagano made a motion. When any buildings or structures are removed from what is known as campground, any cement slabs are left intact. Tom seconded the motion and all approved. And he is taking this motion to his tribal council and he asked that I give this motion to the Board of Selectmen. And this is from Lois O'Leary, Secretary. So. More, more information on the campground. So we have three buildings left to go, or had three buildings. One was taken down. There's a con concrete slab that's left mm -hmm. and remaining that Tom's concerned because of its proximity to where we believe a significant number of graves are, in fact, yeah. that to not do anything. And I don't think anybody's opposed to not doing yeah. anything. The uh, second building on the main site uh, uh, Kathy's working with uh, the Attorney General's office for monies to tear, tear that building down. And again, ba based on the clans, it wish to not uh, do anything with that slab. We'll leave that slab in place as well. Uh, and then the issue is, and as late as today, uh, there's some concern about the roller rink and the paperwork that uh, moved it to town uh, property. And so uh, Kathy's got some work to do with KP or the assessor or both to prove that in fact the, the roller rink is in fact town property. And then with that, we could take the third building down. Now, did, when you bring up the roller rink, and Al had talked to me about it last week, I think, who, he didn't see that that was actually owned by the town. It needs to be. It needs to be, and he was kind of wondering who owned you know who had owned it before so i gave him way back to the beginning of time who had owned it so i don't know if that's helped him out at all okay well again what we need is a, a clear line of sight to yeah. town ownership yeah. so that the ag's office can give us the additional yeah. grant monies because they're willing to fund it but they just need to uh, to clear make title. sure that it's clear mm -hmm. title that it's town yeah. property because he really hasn't been able to find anything so i guess he was going to research it so that's where we're headed so okay. Okay. So it may be a two-step process to finish. Okay. But what, what will happen uh, taking down that last building is that there's signage that we put in the grant so that we will have some nice signs that talk about the site um, and what's, what's there. So go from okay. there. That's good. Okay. Our next one is a disclosure from a municipal employee. And this is Herbert R. Duggan, Jr. He's a reserve police officer. And I guess he... Is he, he owns a business, but he's willing to do all of the work on all of the cruises and things that, that need to be done for no charge, and he won't get any financial gain out of this at all. And this is just a disclosure to that effect. Hmm? That's just the disclosure. Yeah, that's just his, that's just his, and so I, are, I have filled it out so he can have it, you know, and the town clerk keeps that on file. Okay, and this is, also, a thank you to Peter for the review of the following. Uh, this is from FEMA. It is This letter is to notify you of engineering data models and draft data being used in the Federal Emergency Management, the FEMA, ongoing flood project in the Quinnebog watershed. Uh, as discussed during the flood risk review meeting held on September 16, 2019, FEMA's goal is to offer useful, credible data and fair process to help you make informed decisions to continue building a safer and stronger community. This data was developed by FEMA, a mapping partner, Compass PTSJV. 
and it provided the best available calculation of where water will collect and flow in the event of floods based on current conditions. And it has a map here. Hmm. If anybody's interested in looking now or if they want to look at it later. Uh, Beth? No, I can look at it later. Yep. Okay. And I guess that's all for our con that's correspondence. That's okay, now I would like uh, to make a motion to go into executive board session at 7.30. You have that motion? Second. Uh, Wink and I. Snyder I. Coughlin I. Okay, and, and then we will go back into regular meeting and adjourn. Do you want to read that one sentence? Uh, yeah, I'll read that one sentence. Okay, number three is discuss strategy with respect to collective bargaining, litigation, if any open meeting ha may have any detrimental effect on the bargaining or litigation pr 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 position of the public body and the chair so declares. Yes, sir. Okay. So we're all set. Well, I just get that out.